Time now to explore an exciting cutting edge development that's been unveiled by Swift to host the next generation of transaction services. The new state of the art enterprise scale AI platform will allow Swift to both enhance existing solutions and develop brand new AI native services. We're joined now by Tom Shack, Chief Innovation Officer at Swift, Kelly Swit, Senior Director, Global Edge and AI Development Lead at Red Hat, and Narash Shah, Vice President of uh, Services at C3.ai. Got there in the end, guys. We certainly did. It's good to see you all. Somebody had to draw the short straw. And Tom, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't that make you happy? It does. <laughs> I'm glad to see that. But look, what are the, the opportunities that actually drove the need, or what were the main opportunities that drove the need for this new platform? I'm not only happy to be here, but I'm excited about our new opportunities. <laughs> and, and, and really, uh, innovation at, at Swift is, is, is aligned with our, our strategy. And our, real, our mission, stated mission, has been to deliver instant and frictionless transactions. And um, you know, instant means real time, and frictionless means first time, right? So we need to undergo a data transformation, and we need to add to our tools to be able to deliver against that mission. Now, we're already doing that. Um, we've already launched services that, that kind of take us in that direction uh, with account, uh, beneficiary account validation, for example, and, and checking transactions before they happen. Um, but now we're going to add to that. We're going to add to that capability, uh, and and we think the AI ML platform that that we're working on and and and, and taking a, a path to production will give us capabilities to, to deliver against our mission. And sorry to give you a double header to start with, Tom. If you could just give us an overview of this of this new platform. All right. So the, so the platform, a, a couple of things that, that are important to highlight. I think one is are the drivers, and so we need this to be highly performant and fast because we want to move the validation that we do from kind of in the network to pre-validation, and again, to, to deliver the, the, the transaction the, the first time. Um, we want it to be cost effective as well, right? We need to be good stewards of our members' money, so we want to be um, uh, cost effective, and we need to be able to scale. We have a pretty uh, wide amount of opportunities that are available to us um, and it's in, a, in a topic like AI uh, that we need to be able to get to. Um, the other thing that I would mention is, is that we, we are getting um, really good help of, um, from strategic vendors uh, to, to put this platform together. We are going to run it on-prem, um, so we're, we're, we're not, we'll run it and be ready for a cloud service, but we'll be able to preserve all the privacy and data and the, and, 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 and the security requirements we have when, in the way that we use this data. So really, um, really exciting and clear business drivers and, and really good opportunity to leverage strategic partners to bring this capability to Swift. I mean, that overview, <coughs> Kelly, shows us just how much is going on in this platform, what it's going to achieve. But look, there's a lot of technology underpinning it. So can you tell us about that technology that actually got us to where we are with Tom's vision? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's been a, an exciting journey with Tom and Arash right here, my partner in crime. <coughs> uh, and that is um, when we looked at kind of what was needed and in, in the requirements that Tom really came to the table with, one of the pieces that became very clear is that he needed to be able to deliver on the future of like bringing cloud technology to mm -hmm. Swift while still being able to keep that security and the data privacy that he talked about. So we looked at how do we bring a cloud platform to the data center at Swift. And that's what we've done with Red Hat's OpenShift platform. And then with that, we needed to bring a very strategic partner, which is C3, that AI to help with the actual build of where the model ops is going to take place and all of the, the data science work that, uh, that Tom's team was going to perform. If we can stay with you, Kelly, talk us through yeah. this partnership between the three of you. You look great sat here together. You look very much <laughs> in unison, singing from one hymn sheet, so to speak. But Red Hat, C3 and Swift, how are you guys working together? Well, we've been working together for now a couple of years um, to get ready for today. So we have been collaborating quite a bit on a daily basis, uh, sometimes even late at night and text messages and emails um, in order to make sure that we could um, really be able to get to this point. Um, and for, for us at Red Hat, that's just kind of part of our DNA. We come from open source, so we're used to um, collaborating in a community and driving kind of collections of, of people and thought leadership together. And um, we started very early on with, um, with C3 um, in the partnership. And, uh, and so it, it became very natural for us to all work together in order to kind of deliver against Tom's vision.
Yeah, and, and Naresh, what's your view on this partnership? Because it's, you know, it's been very flatteringly described, actually, that you, know, you, you all worked so well together that it wasn't unusual to get phone calls in the early hours of the morning. And <laughs> it goes with the territory. But give me your take on it from C3's point of view. Well, I think building upon what, what Kelly was saying, I look upon it as a very synergistic partnership where we're building on the strengths of the three organizations to produce this platform. And you see that reflected in what it's designed to do, which is a secure, scalable, and what I consider an adaptable solution to meet some very relevant requirements that, that are in the marketplace right now. Um, combined, you know, SWIFT is in a um, very important position to be in a trusted intermediary, and their ability to imbue security and data privacy into all the aspects of their function is something that's reflected in this platform and will be one of the, the fundamental uh, elements of it. And then you, you heard Kelly talk about how Red Hat uh, enables this uh, open source, uh, excuse me, this uh, uh, containerized platform approach, which will allow the ability to scale from the initial implementation on-prem very rapidly to other cloud implementations or in a hybrid implementation. Yes. Um, and then the, the, one of the beauties about our platform approach is you're not building one solution, you have the ability to build multiple solutions to solve many different business problems. We're starting with one first, uh, but we'll very rapidly be able to address many others, other problems along the way. Naresh, you pointed out the importance of data privacy there. We're hearing a lot at the moment about responsible AI. <coughs> How exactly does this new platform achieve that? Yeah, there, there's five fundamental tenets of responsible uh, AI. There's uh, accuracy, uh, there's uh, interpretability, there's uh, uh, fairness, you, know, you have to be auditable, and then you also have to be secure and, and, and for uh, privacy as well. So there are elements of the capability built in that address all of this. So the, the platform allows an end-to-end -end ability to design, develop, and operate applications which have machine learning embedded in them. And those machine learning algorithms are based on um, fundamental frameworks which are easy to use, they're composable, which is to say that you can assemble multiple complex ones to solve a very compl um, even more complex problem. Uh, you're able to derive uh, what the machine learning algorithm is doing and see why it's doing it. So it's not a black box. It tells you what features, what are the contributions that are uh, driving those predictions. So you get to do more than just be told what, what the, a particular risk is. You may be told why this is a particular risk and what avenues you may want to pursue to go and address that risk. Um, there is also the ability to go and monitor these models in continuous operation so they, the performance is to a certain level that you expect. There are always other models that you do in parallel so if they perform better, you can go and automatically replace them and you maintain those in a management framework that has a governance associated with it and you track everything, right? Everything from the data to the metrics to the machine learning models to the predictions they do. Everything is, has a provenance where you're able to record why we did it, what we did, and what it's asking us to do. So this is really forensic? It can be if it's necessary, yes. Yeah. I mean, Tom, Tom, let's follow on from that because I'd like you to explain to me the concepts of federate AI, and particularly how that in itself can actually help with anomaly detection. We've had a flavor of that. So yeah. just take me a little bit deeper into the journey, if you could, please. Yeah, so that's uh, our, our base case on transactional data is, is what we call anomaly detection. And probably the easiest way to describe that is not normal, right? So we're looking for patterns in, in transaction flow that's not normal, right? And you need to be very kind of precise about that so that you can build a feedback loop and you can you know, uh, kind of follow up on, on, on things that need to be followed up on. Um, so in, in terms of where we can take that, uh, the federated AI is something that we're looking at from an innovation point of view, um, along with some additional privacy enhancing technologies um, that really allows us to, to, to move the model to where the data is at, as opposed to move the data to the model. So it's, it, it's a pretty, um, it's a pretty uh, in one way well understood, but another way, um, uh, very difficult to implement, but it actually puts us in a position to, to co-create um, eventually with uh, other, uh, other uh, banks in our, in our network. And I think, you know, and again, aspirationally, I think we, we have a, a, an opportunity where we can build um, something that nobody else can build. 
and I think we do that, you know, on the foundation of trust that we have from our from our customers, and and the kind of the um, uh, acknowledgement that that you know together and bringing the community together to solve this problem and to, and to build these capabilities, we can do that better together as a community than than any one institution can do on their own, even the most sophisticated of the banks. So Kelly, come back into the conversation because in light of everything that we've heard, what advice would you give to a client who is actually thinking of building a platform like this? It doesn't happen overnight, obviously. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, we actually spent some time uh, talking about what, what advice we would give. And, um, you know, besides the fact that you, you need to make sure that you have a solid team and a plan and the right talent in your organization to kind of move this forward. When you think about kind of the actual technical choices, um, I would like to say that we've done a little bit of the hard work, mm -hmm. um, thanks to Tom. And bit. so a little bit of the hard work. And so I think that we have a great opportunity um, with our two companies to be able to take kind of our learnings and all of the advanced engineering that we've done together that can help accelerate other customers if they want to kind of have a similar platform, they should call us and uh, we can help them kind of take that journey with all of the learnings that we've had with Tom. We'll take your number later, by the yeah. way. <laughs> and Arash, from your perspective, what kind of pearls of wisdom, what advice would you give to firms who are looking to further embed intelligence into applications? Yeah, I, I mean, now that we've gone uh, through the trouble to create this platform, essentially all the, the plumbing underneath has, has been set up. And what you can focus on now is the actual business problem in hand. Yes. Uh, identify what the problems are, what value you would, um, you would reap from addressing that problem using a machine learning solution. Every, the technology is a tool to implement, right? But really what's going to keep this uh, on point and to be valuable is to solve a, a relevant business problem uh, that really helps your organization. Okay, Tom, we started with you. We're going to finish with you. Okay. You're going to look into the future. Okay, are you ready for this? I do it every day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's next for the AI platform? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we, we, we obviously have a lot of work to do to get it into production and to start to get it into product. So I think it's important that we show um, that it's working and that we're adding value and we can do things we couldn't do every step of the way, right? So as excited as we are, I think we need to demonstrate uh, the, the, the value for that. Um, there's many other kind of use cases that we could apply. Um, uh, kind of top of the list are um, the way that we, we uh, address and work with our customers and the, the customer experience is important. Um, uh, use cases in IT operations. You know, we've run at a very high standard in terms of how we operate the SWIFT network and we continue to invest in that. And so that, that, that's going to be another area. So I guess one aspect is kind of broadening out the use cases and the value we can get from that, demonstrating value every step of the way. And then in terms of what's, what's possible, again, I, I think we're in a position where SWIFT can actually build something with our community that nobody else can match. And at and, and, and this point, you know, we're, we're very optimistic. It's going to be a lot of work, but, but we think we could uh, do something that really benefits the entire community. Okay, so more late nights, really, conversations. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> well, Tom, Kelly, Narash, as you guys pave a road into the future, time is else ever against us in the studio. So I'm sorry, that's all the time we have for you on Cybers TV today. Thank you so much for giving us your time. Tom Shack, Chief Innovation Officer at Swift. Kelly Switt, Senior Director, Global Edge and AI Development Lead at Red Hat. And Narash Shah, Vice President of Services at C3.ai. Thanks. Thanks to you again. Thank you. Thank you.